If you want to become a competent data scientist who can pass most data science interviews and can land a six-figure data science job in the fastest amount of time, then this video is for you. My name is Anwar and I've been working as a data scientist in some of the big tech companies in the US for the last 10 plus years. And based on my decade of experience while working at Meta, Cisco, Wells Fargo, I wanted to share with you what I think is the fastest way to become a data scientist in 2025, even if you are starting from scratch. As we go into this video, I'll be giving a lot of references on what you can learn from where you can learn it, and there's no need to take notes or screenshots. Everything I'm saying is already part of the free guide I've shared in the description, which gives a complete roadmap of all these things I'm talking about in this video. So the very first thing I would say is that get clarity on what kind of role you want to target for data scientist roles. I think the most beginner friendly roles are contract roles. One, because when companies are hiring for contract roles, the bar to entry is usually much lower because companies do not have a long-term commitment with you as they have with the full-time employees. Contract role interviews are usually much easier to crack than full-time roles because the kind of questions they are asked are usually not very deep and also there are usually just one to two interview rounds to get a job into contract roles as compared to full-time roles where you have to go through many many interview loops so if this is your first or second job as a data scientist i would suggest that you focus more on contract roles rather than full-time roles there is this filter of contract roles it is available on linkedin jobs it is available on Indeed and Dice.com. So you can just use that filter to just focus on jobs which are contract because as I said, they are usually easier to get into for your first or second job as a data scientist. So now with that said, let's look at some of the jobs which are posted for contract data science roles and see what kind of skill set they are asking for. So first we'll figure out what kind of skill set they're asking for in these job roles. And then in the later section of the video, I'll go over what are some resources from where you can learn it in the most cost and time optimal way. So there are options for finding contract roles on pretty much all job portals. For example, on LinkedIn, if you see on the, if you click on this apply filter, you can see that there is this contract role here. You can check that filter. Similarly, if you go to dice.com and search for in the United States data scientist roles, there you can see that there's a contract uh, position employment type available as a filter. And also on Indeed, you can search data scientist in the United States and then in the job type, you can, you can search for contract roles. So that is how you can find the contract roles. Now let's look at some of the job descriptions for these contract roles to see what kind of skill set is needed. So let's look at this role. I won't be zooming too much into the senior data science roles. Let's see what the skill set is needed for more junior friendly roles. Uh, as you can see, they need some understanding of Snowflake. This is mainly where you run SQL, Gen AI, uh, OpenAI is also related to Gen AI. Then they need some knowledge of natural language processing, machine learning engineer, machine learning and deep learning. Uh, in the later section of the video, I'll go through some of the resources you can um, do to learn that. And that's basically it. Uh, they need some understanding of cloud environment, AI, NLP, and machine learning, all of that. So I'll go over uh, some of the resources you can use to uh, learn most of that stuff. Let's look for this one. Uh, this is senior, but let's see what they're asking for some experience, but mainly it's predictive modeling, data analysis. Um, they're asking for SQL. Python or R, I think Python is sufficient. Uh, pivot tables, etc. So there's again SQL, um, and that's pretty much it. Um, let's look at some other roles. Let's look at this one. Um, so they want someone to have experience in programming uh, in any of these. Python should be sufficient. Some knowledge of AWS, um, data science and programming, data science. And that is, and then in terms of preferred, they need MySQL, BigQuery, Snowflake. This is all related to SQL, nothing fancy there. Uh, data science, design knowledge, scikit-learn, Python, um, TensorFlow, Keras, um, or any other. So usually my recommendation would be to learn PyTorch instead of these two. Let's look at this one too. Um, so they are asking for, some knowledge of LLM, uh, ML AI, some knowledge of AWS, PyTorch, 
um, this will cover some knowledge of ML ops. So this is more senior role. Um, as a junior data scientist, I won't really recommend it. So let's look at this role. Um, it is asking for some software as a service knowledge, no development. Okay, that's good. Uh, some SQL knowledge, uh, PowerPoint presentation, thought leadership, etc. So again, uh, I think with the reference material I'll be providing, you should be able to learn most of these. Um, Gen AI data scientist, um, AI ML decision making, NLP, name entry recognition. This is all part of NLP text classification, etc. And the reference material which I'll, I'll be providing around Gen AI should be able to cover this. Uh, NLT case space C, you should uh, again be covered. Uh, recall precision, F1 score, this is all related to ML, AI, NLP, SQL, NoSQL, some knowledge of AWS. So by looking at these, uh, it looks like you need to have some understanding of SQL. That's pretty much non-negotiable. Then you need to know Python. Then you need to have some understanding of AI, ML, um, some knowledge of statistics. And then there are some jobs which are asking for Gen AI. Um, I'll be providing um, references to all of these from where you can learn. Um, as for learning some AWS, I think the AWS foundational certification, which is called AWS practitioner, should be sufficient for you to develop some basic expertise. So now as we have looked into what are different skill sets needed to become a data scientist, let's see what are some resources from where you can learn them in the most cost optimal and time optimal way. As SQL is one of the foundations on which most data roles stand, for learning SQL, I think the best guide is using this free lead code, SQL Question Compilation. It has 50 SQL questions. It has nicely categorized into different SQL techniques you need to solve them. And you don't need to set up anything. You can just go to lead code, create a free account, and you can go through that list and practice your SQL skills as you go through it. I would highly encourage that you create a cheat sheet of different SQL commands you are building because then you can readily use that cheat sheet for solving the next questions as well as if you have that cheat sheet handy. You can review it just before your interview so that most SQL commands, they are fresh in your memory, and there are not a lot of SQL commands. With just 10, 15, or at max 20 SQL commands, you should be able to solve most SQL interview questions. So if you have that cheat sheet handy, that will help you a lot. So once you have solved those 50 SQL questions, let's now move to Python, which is also needed for most data science roles. For Python, my recommendation would be going through this Udemy course. It is a course which I went through in 2016, and it is the course which I recommend to most people. If you want to learn the basics of Python, as well as how you use it for different machine learning, algorithms. It is a very beginner friendly course. It has about an hour long section on Python crash course and then it goes on to how you would use Python for most data science and machine learning tasks. If you have no idea about programming or if you have never coded in any language before, then this course might be a little difficult for you to follow. But if you have some basic understanding on how for loops work, or if you have written any code in any programming language, then I think this code would be very useful for you because it walks you through how you will write basic if statements, and then it leads you towards how you can use different data science libraries like Pandas and Scikit-learn to solve different data science tasks. Very beginner friendly, highly recommended course. One thing which I would say about Udemy courses is that the list price you would see sometimes would be 100 plus dollars. Try to find a coupon. There are many coupons available. Just search for it on the internet for Udemy. You should be able to get this course at around $20 price point. If Udemy is not showing that price because of some discount already applied, then try to get a coupon so that you could get it at a discounted price. So with these two materials, you'll be able to learn SQL, learn Python, and how you would use Python to learn some data science skills. But I think the data science component of that is still a little shallow. Now to complement it, there is another book which I would highly recommend, which goes over how you use 
scikit-learn and PyTorch so that you could solve some hands-on machine learning problems using scikit-learn and some deep learning problems using PyTorch. I think that's a phenomenal, very excellent book. This is from O'Reilly, so go through it as well. Once you have gone through that book, then you have developed most intuition around how to use these tools to develop to solve different machine learning and deep learning problems. But there is still a gap in your understanding when it comes to statistics and how the statistics lead into the intuition behind different machine learning algorithms. That is where I would recommend this book for, again from O'Reilly about practical statistics for data scientists. There are two versions of it. So make sure you buy the second version, which is the latest version. It is again a very beginner friendly book. It starts from what is average, mean, medium. So very basic foundations of statistics. And then it gradually builds on top of how you develop linear regression and decision trees and some other advanced stuff. It also has some Python exercises in it. So if you want to do it, you can also follow along. I have recommended this book to pretty much everyone who asks for advice. Very good book, very beginner friendly. So please add it to your list of things you have to go through if you're planning to become a data scientist. I think that covers most of the things you need for most data science roles. But I wanted to add some components around Gen AI as well. A, because it is getting a lot of hype. It is being asked in a lot of new roles, especially for contract roles. And second, it is very easy to learn if you have the right foundations, which you should have if you have gone through all the other material I have mentioned so far. For Gen AI, there are a lot of resources out there on YouTube, on Udemy, all of Udacity. But the one resource which I think is probably the most complete. So this Gen AI book from O'Reilly, it is very practical, very beginner friendly, very hands-on. And it's, it starts from how different NLP techniques evolved over a period of time. It gives you an understanding of how different LLMs work. And then it develops your understanding on how you can fine tune these LLMs to more specific and advanced tasks. Great book, recently launched, very up to date. So I think if you could go through that book as well, that should give you sufficient knowledge to answer most of the Gen AI related questions in your interviews. As I said, you don't have to take notes of all the things as I said, there are even more details in the guide, which is available in the description below, absolutely free of cost. So you can use that to your advantage to fast track your learning around data science. And then once you think you're ready, then you can just start applying to as many jobs as you can. I've created a separate video on the topic of how you can fast track your way of applying to as many jobs in the shortest amount of time using some automation but not too much the link for that is in the in the description on this video please check it out i'm pretty sure you'll like it thank you so much for watching